Welcome to Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean. Today's program is about the vegetarian apostles and scriptures of the original Jesus movement. From time to time, I do programs on vegetarianism and veganism, mentioning, pointing out the vegetarianism and vegan ethics present in some scriptures and spiritual traditions. And today, it's my pleasure to share with you about the vegetarian apostles. In the writings of early church fathers, sometimes are to be noticed quotes from vegetarian gospels and references to the apostles as following a vegetarian diet. The Gospel of the Hebrews, Gospel of the Ebionites, and Gospel of the Nazareans were known and read by some of those early church fathers of Christianity who had access to them and sometimes quoted them in their writings, thus preserving these quotes from these scriptures in their writings. This was a known thing, that the original Jesus movement was vegetarian. The Gospel of the Hebrews was a Jewish Christian gospel. Most of the text of the Gospel of the Hebrews is now lost, unfortunately, with only a few fragments of it surviving as quotations by early church fathers and in certain apocryphal writings. The fragments contain traditions of, about Jesus, sayings of Jesus, and a reference to a resurrected Jesus appearing to his brother James the Just, showing a high regard for James as the leader of the Jewish Christian church based in Jerusalem. The Apostle Paul mentioned this account of a resurrection appearance of Christ to James the Just in his letter known as 1 Corinthians, and scholars usually date the composition of 1 Corinthians to between 53 and 57 AD. Thus, if the Gospel of the Hebrews was known to the Apostle Paul, its date of composition would have been prior to Paul's letter, making it very early indeed, sometime earlier than between 53 and and 57 AD, making it one of the earliest Gospels. There are some fascinating writings that have survived. There, in addition to some of those quotes from the Gospel of the Hebrews and Gospel of the Ebionites and Gospel of the Nazareans, there is a body of literature known as the Recognitions of Clement and the Clementine Homilies, a kind of huge Ebionite book of Acts, largely centered upon the teachings of the Apostle Peter, and it's all pro-vegetarian. Now, it's not a 19th century channeled writing or something, but something preserved in the writings of early Christianity in a series of 13 volumes known as the Anti-Nicene Fathers, the writings from Augustine, Basil the Great, you know, all of these uh, saints of the past. Actually, I'm not sure about Augustine. There's Basil the Great and uh, Clement of Rome and, and some of those very early saints and fathers of early Christianity from those uh, first three or four centuries uh, A.D. And so this is not a new writing. This is something known to people who are scholars, who have attended seminary. These are books to be found on the shelves of most uh, seminary libraries and have been with us for most of the last 2,000 years. Just not too many people have known about it. Most have this uh, kind of Sunday school notion about disciples eating fish, hanging out in Galilee. And I suppose they imagine these disciples just staying young forever, selling fish, perhaps opening a Jesus fish store somewhere in Galilee, something like that. In the New Testament, the lives of these disciples uh, trails off into the fog. They recede into the background. Half of the New Testament is authored by the Apostle Paul. And so whatever happened to Thomas and John and these other disciples, you know, that all sort of disappears into the fog. And you don't really get to, to, to watch those disciples get older and follow them as they become, in their own right, mature, adult, spiritual teachers, getting older. You don't really get that history in the New Testament. You have to rely upon other texts, such as the Clementine homilies, 
also various acts of different apostles. In the Syriac dialect of the Aramaic language are preserved various acts of the apostles, acts of Thomas, acts of John, acts of Peter, and so on. So there really are many ancient texts we can call upon to learn more about the apostles, as well as there are quotes, as I mentioned, from the writings of early church fathers. John never ate meat. James, the brother of the Lord, lived on seeds and plants and touched neither meat nor wine. The Apostle Thomas, this is from the Syriac Acts of Thomas. He continuously fasts and prays and abstaining from the eating of flesh, unquote. The Apostle Matthew partook of seeds, nuts, and hard-shelled fruits and vegetables without flesh. Peter said, I live on olives and bread, to which I rarely only add vegetables, unquote. Completely mind-blowing, not about fishing in Galilee uh, at all. Uh, a whole different world starts to open up as you realize that there are these other texts and that some of them are quoted by early church fathers. So they, these are not unknown to uh, the people of the first few centuries A.D. Meet the vegetarian apostles, the leadership of the original Jesus movement. The first followers of Jesus, also known as Ebionites or Nazareans, were not only kosher, but also strictly adhered to a vegetarian diet. The largest surviving collection of Ebionite scriptures is the Clementine homilies and the recognitions of Clement, which are vegetarian gospels and acts that condemn animal sacrifice in all forms. For example, in the book of homilies, it states that God does not want animals killed at all and condemns those who eat meat. And the passages below also show that the Ebionites' diet was vegan, plant-based, as there are no references to eggs or dairy, milk, no animal products are mentioned at all. They, the apostles, embraced and preserved in a strenuous and a laborious life with fasting and abstinence from wine and meat. That's a quote from Eusebius, church father and historian from his book, Proof of the Gospels from St. Peter. I live on olives and bread to which I rarely only add vegetables. That's from the Clementine Homilies, chapter 12, and is also found in a parallel document that's uh, got some of the same material in it, known as the Recognitions of Clement, from chapter 7. Matthew, and happiness is found in the practice of virtue. Accordingly, the Apostle Matthew partook of seeds and nuts, hard-shelled fruits and vegetables without flesh. That's a quote found in the writings of Clement of Alexandria, the instructor, book 2, chapter 1. Clement of Alexandria, a famous theologian and early church father, discussing the diet of the Apostle Matthew and describing it as being vegetarian. The Apostle Thomas, he continuously fasts and prays and abstaining from the eating of flesh and the drinking of wine. He eats only bread without salt, drinks only water, and wears the same garment in fine weather and winter, accepting nothing from anyone, and gives whatever he has to others. Acts of Thomas, chapter 20. Now, the fact that he wore the same clothes all the time doesn't really interest uh, most people, I'm sure, but his diet of not eating flesh, but uh, a plant-based diet, is probably mind-blowing news to some people. John never ate meat. That's a quote from an early church father, the uh, scholar Eusebius, the history of the church. James the Just, brother of Jesus, head apostle, successor of Christ, next leader of the group there in Jerusalem, was a vegetarian. Jesus had a brother. He's referred to by scholars and historians as James the Just or James the Righteous or James the Teacher of Righteousness. 
According to a wide variety of sources, James became Jesus' spiritual successor, the next leader of this group, referred to as the Hebrew Christians or the Ebionites. Ebionite comes from the Hebrew and refers to the poor and refers to the original group of disciples mentioned in the book of Acts. The Jewish Christians called themselves the Ebionites. Ebionite is a word derived from Hebrew meaning the poor and were the first Christian community described in the New Testament book of Acts of the Apostles in chapter 4, a spiritual or intentional community that shared all of their possessions in common. They're called the Ebionites, and their brand of Christianity, the original Christianity before Paul, if you will, has sometimes been called Ebionite Christianity, or they've been called the Jewish Christians, the Hebrew Christians, or the Nazareans sometimes. Professor Robert Eisenman, in his book, James the Just, The Key to Unlocking the Secrets of Early Christianity and the Dead Sea Scrolls, says, quote, James was a vegetarian, unquote. And this is from an early Christian document. James, the brother of the Lord, lived on seeds and plants and touched neither meat nor wine, unquote. James, the brother of the Lord, was holy from his mother's womb, and he drank no wine, nor strong drink, nor did he eat flesh. Unquote from Eusebius, the history of the church. And furthermore, wouldn't everyone in Jesus' family, brothers and sisters, be following the same diet and ethical code? On what planet would parents raise one child to be vegetarian from birth, but another gets raised on a meat diet, you know, who does that? Do you know Do you know anyone who's ever felt strongly about vegetarianism to the point of having, you know, teaching their, their, their child to be veg, but another child to not follow that diet? That makes no sense, does it? Keith Akers makes some great observations in his article, Was Jesus a Vegetarian? Quote, Eusebius says that James, the brother of Jesus, was a vegetarian and in fact was evidently raised as a vegetarian, according to Ecclesiastical History, Chapter 2. Why would Jesus' parents have raised James as a vegetarian unless they were vegetarian themselves and raised Jesus as a vegetarian also? Eusebius also states in the Proof of the Gospel, Chapter 3, that all of the apostles abstained from meat and wine. Unquote. So much for hanging out with fish and living in Galilee forever. And James became the successor of Christ and next leader of the Jesus movement. The Gospel of Thomas, saying 12, says, The disciples said to Jesus, We are aware that you will depart from us. Who will be our leader? Jesus said to them, No matter where you come, it is to James the just that you shall go. For whose sake heaven and earth have come to exist, unquote. That's from Bentley Layton's translation of the Gospel of Thomas. Though never seeing eye to eye with the original Jerusalem community on many things, including the issue of meat eating, in his letters, in his epistles, even Paul, the apostle, confirms the leadership role of James the Just, the Lord's brother, pillar of the church there in Jerusalem. And he himself followed this edict from Gospel of Thomas, saying 12, and went to visit James the Just, seeking his blessings on a couple of occasions. Early church fathers and other later voices affirming the very same existence of this earlier veg tradition of the disciples of the original Jesus movement, Christianity before Paul, in other words. James, the brother of Jesus, lived on seeds and vegetables and did not accept meat or wine. A quote from St. Augustine, St. Augustine. The consumption of animal flesh was unknown up until the Great Flood, but since the Great Flood we have had animal flesh stuffed into our mouths. Jesus the Christ, who appeared when the time was fulfilled, again joined the end to the beginning so that we are now no longer allowed to eat animal flesh, 
unquote. A pro-vegetarian early church father by the name of Hieronymus, also known as St. Jerome, who apparently read the Gospel of the Hebrews and was quite influenced by Ebionite views. He probably read Hebrews, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and who knows what else. But he seemed to be considered orthodox, but very well informed about this veg tradition. And as you just heard with that particular paragraph, seems squarely on the side of the vegetarian point of view, even though he's considered an orthodox saint in orthodox and Catholic Christianity. Clements of Alexandria, quote, sacrifices were invented by men to be a pretext for eating flesh, unquote. Origin of Alexandria, the great theologian Origen, was a teetotaler and a vegetarian, and he often fasted for long periods of time. That's a quote from a source quoted by Wikipedia in the Wikipedia entry for Origen of Alexandria. And this is from St. Basil the Great, early church father, saint, and considered orthodox by orthodoxy and Catholic by Catholics. Not a channeled writing, not even a Gnostic text or apocryphal source, but someone recognized as orthodox in orthodox Christianity. He says, the steam of meat meals darkens the spirit. One can hardly have virtue if one enjoys meat meals and feasts. In the earthly paradise or Eden, no one sacrificed animals and no one ate meat. Unquote. St. Basil the Great. And so there you have it. Evidence for the vegetarianism of the original Jesus movement and even early church fathers and including Orthodox ones and early church historians are mentioning this vegetarian tradition present at the beginning of Christianity. Christianity before Paul, as I like to call it. Gospel of the Ebionites, Gospel of the Nazareans, Gospel of the Hebrews, Clementine homilies, Syriac, Aramaic, Acts of various apostles, and other literature. What has survived of this literature is available for free online. Scroll below in the notes section below and click on the link that goes to my e-library, the, the sayings of Jesus and the Ebionite section, and you can have access to all of these things. And if you're just hearing the, the audio of this podcast someplace else, just send me an email and I'll send you that link or whatever links you're seeking out, Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of the Ebionites, and especially the Clementine literature. I also have an ebook online. I can send you a link to that as well, which deals not only with the vegetarianism of the apostles, but vegetarian sayings of Jesus from the Aramaic version of the Gospel of Luke and other sources from early Christianity, vegetarianism of the Gnostics, and vegetarianism of John the Baptist, too, who didn't eat locusts, but the locust bean. And there's a lot of uh, information, a lot of evidence, actually, about the diet of John the Baptist and the spiritual movement he was part of, how that was very clearly vegetarian. And everyone agrees that that is the case. Send me an email if you're looking for links to these things. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. James at spiritualawakeningradio.com. If you're living in the U.S., you can send me a text message at this number, 508 603 9381. We've just Scratch the surface today. There's a vast amount of information. I've tried to put it in my ebook on evidence for the vegetarianism of Jesus and early Christianity uh, from all sources Aramaic translations of the regular Gospels, what survives of these other Jewish Gospels, vegetarian Gospels, the 
uh, acts of various apostles, quotes from early church fathers, uh, eventually Gnosticism and Manichaeanism, the Church of the Light in China. They were vegetarian as well. There's a huge history, a vast history, and a lot of information that has survived, uh, frankly, a surprising amount of information. I don't remember what I ate last Tuesday, but here we have uh, the Apostle Peter uh, talking about eating olives and bread 2,000 years ago. And this is a quote, you know, found in an ancient text. So it's really quite impressive that we can learn this much about the diet of the early Christians. James at spiritualawakeningradio.com. And finally, a word about a worldwide vegan prayer. Uh, some are praying every Sunday, every Sunday morning between 8 and 8.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time, which is very early on the West Coast, 5 to 5.30 a.m. Pacific Time. And you can calculate this, uh, you know, you can calculate when 8 a.m. is U.S. Eastern Time or New York Time. You can calculate that to your particular time zone, if you like, and join in at that time. There is a worldwide effort these days to pray for the world to go vegan. Thanks for joining me today on this vegetarian edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio, focused on the vegetarian apostles and scriptures of early Christianity. Thanks for joining me.